Welcome back everybody. Explanation as to what is going on, coming soon. Looks very good. So a lot of what I just did might look a bit familiar to the viewers that have been with the channel through the whole Caterpillar D2 5J number 1113 rebuild series. In that series, specifically what I called the try build, and I, I spelled it T-R-Y, even though I rebuilt three starting engines, so it the correct form would have been TRI for try as in triple, but because I faced so many challenges through that whole saga, I decided to call it the TRY try build to have a clever play on words that invariably newcomers to the series would say, that's not how you spell that. And that's how I could tell who had been here from the start and who hadn't. Anyhow, we're getting off track down the old rabbit hole. Um, in the old try build series, I did quite a few different reworks to the known weak end thrust setup on the front main bearing for the Caterpillar D2 and D4 sized starting engines, which is what we have right here. And this is the one we just finished the work on. But I had another small starting engine project. Point that at yourself, man. I had another small starting engine project that I took on. Uh, it belongs to a buddy of mine, and it made for kind of an interesting kind of re-redesign on my prior main bearing retention setup that I had engineered for the old tri-build, and there was enough other things different about the starting engine block that I thought it would make for a useful addition to the old tri-build playlist. And if you all are new to the channel and you want to see everything that there is to see with the starting engine rebuilds for the Cat D2 and D4, as well as two or three different re-engineering plays that I cooked up in the old noggin to try to improve some of these setups, I've got the entire playlist organized from start to finish for one click convenient viewing. We'll see if we can get a link to that playlist either in a pop-up or description down below. So. Let's get to what we actually did. Now, the tri-build veterans will undoubtedly remember. In that series, I replaced this original cat design straight shanked bearing retention friction fit dowel with a updated threaded version where I modified these 5 16 by 18 thread pitch Allen head screws with an oil hole down the center for the bearing, just like is found in the original dowel. And I also had to turn the head down a bit so that once I drilled and threaded the block into the aluminum bearing, these would go down with the assistance of some Loctite and provide a near bulletproof front main thrust bearing retention setup that would eliminate the eventual excessive end play that the crankshafts would accumulate after these little dowels worked their way out and that bearing chose to loosen up. This block though, 
posed a couple of new challenges because it's fundamentally different from any of the blocks you've seen me rebuild on this channel to date, all right? What's unique about this one? We talk about first generation tech on the Caterpillars quite a bit here in these D2 rebuild series. This is first of the first, all right? These starting engine blocks like this were only found on the very early RD4 tractors and some of the early, early D4400 power unit engines. What sets them apart is they were not made with a front main bearing oil seal. There's no provision for one right here, all right? All they relied upon was proper clearance, crankshaft to bearing, and the crankshafts had this reverse spiral cut into them so that when they were spinning round and around, that oil groove was continually pulling the oil away from the outside gear case portion of the block and returning it back to the sump. By contrast, this is the much more common D2, D4 starting engine block that you've seen me do the rebuilds on on the channel to date. You can see we've got this large oil seal area on that front main, all right? And there's another fundamental difference between these blocks, and this is the one that tripped me up. So this is what we're used to. We've got the center hole right here where that retention dowel or my threaded version would go, and we've got two other oil feed holes on either side of it that basically let the oil that accumulates into this pocket run through and into that main bearing. This early style block, earliest of the early, no seal, and they only ever had just the dowel pin hole drilled into the bottom of that pocket. We do not have the other two oil feed holes. So if I were to put a raised head threaded pin set screw into that bearing, I'm afraid that by the time the oil got up high enough to run down through the hex drive and into the center of the pin to get to the bearing, it would also be overtopping the oil pocket that is in the block. And incidentally, the rear cover is the same way, just a single hole. Now, my first inclination was, let's just drill those two missing holes in the block and in the cover and our oil feed issue is resolved while still using the same raised head thread pin design because when I put the raised head in these, you not only have what accumulates in the top of the pin and runs down, you've got those other two holes in each pocket feeding the bearing anyhow, so you didn't really lose any real estate oil-wise with this design. But then I had an idea. Why are we going with a raised head at all when I could put something in here that is either flush with the bottom of that pocket or even recessed? So. I discarded these Allen head screws and I chose to go with a set screw. Okay, it's the same 5 16 by 18 thread pitch. I just cut it off the length. I did have to go and heat it red hot with the torch, let it slowly cool to take the temper out of it so I could drill it because these are typically fairly hard. Once I did that, I put a through hole down the center that incidentally is a 64th larger in diameter than what was in the original straight dowel from Cat. So, I don't know that it's going to meter any more oil, but it certainly isn't going to meter any less than what I had before. Then the issue became, how do you get a set screw to tighten in without going all the way down through the bearing and potentially getting into the crankshaft? Well, whereas the raised headed um, Allen screw had a shoulder on it that allowed it to bottom out and stop, much like the original dowel did, you don't have that with a set screw. What I did to get around that problem was when I cut the threads, I was very careful to not cut the threads all the way down through the bearing. We went probably three quarters of the way into the bearing. And I've got a cross section sketch right here that shows what I'm talking about. So here's our block, that's our oil pocket, and this is the bearing right here. So we've got good threads that go, like I said, most of the way through the bearing and then they stop. So when you put the set screw in, it's going to tighten up about right here, and you still have an excellent standoff away from the journal of that crankshaft, all right? Whereas before, we relied on the raised head of the Allen head screw to go and bottom out on the top of the pocket. We don't have that anymore, so we just bottom out right here. Put some uh, green Loctite on the threads of that set screw. It can't go any further down in, it's impossible, and that Loctite is going to um, 
prevent it from going out plus the fact that we're running a slight interference down here at the bottom where the threads and the aluminum ran out i kind of like that setup even better than my old one so that is what you see here we've got a set screw that's actually recessed down below the floor of the pocket somewhat it doesn't go far enough in to interfere with the crankshaft even if that bearing accumulates some wear we did the same thing in there on the front main as well and i think i'm going to use that set screw method for even these later style blocks that have the extra oil feed holes i just like it better so i thought this was a good episode to tack on to the tail end of that old uh, try build playlist and now we've got enough examples on there it covers the earliest of the early starting engine blocks as well as the much more common later style um, that have better lubrication uh, provisions so i hope you all found this interesting uh, i think it was an episode worth doing and a good one to round out the old uh, playlist set and once again, if you are not familiar with playlists, everything I've ever done on the channel is organized into a playlist where you can hit that playlist tab and you can find anything you want, anything that pertains to the cats, to the Ford tractors, to the IHs, to plowing, to dirt work, to rebuilds, to D2, D6. It's all, there's a playlist for everything if you're only looking for one specific bit of viewing. Thank you for watching everyone. Um, nice to have another little project uh, ticked off my list. We retain most of the super uber first generation characteristics of the engine while only performing the necessary upgrades to keep that crankshaft tight. It's reliable, yet still as original as can be achieved, which at the end of the day is all we can ask for. Hope to see you all back again.